Dang. <laughs> These questions are deep. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on 28th and Colin. There were just so many rules that came with living there. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't wear yellow, couldn't wear black, or sometimes I couldn't wear red. After a certain hour, like I wasn't able to go out, you know, because there were people <laughs> shooting each other. It, it, was, it was scary. And um, at that point, it was just like, man, I, I gotta be home by six, seven. So what am I gonna do for the rest of the night? Just go on the internet. <laughs> and you know, that's, that's kind of where it, I, I found everything, you know. When you're not really able to express yourself freely back at home or like with your family, with your friends, having the internet as a place to just hang out and like put your work on there without being like judged or criticized, I think that's cool. You know, you could just put your beats on there and people will like them and give you feedback. Um, you know, where maybe at church, my uncle wouldn't like me making beats. <laughs> so it's just cool that, you know, I had the internet at the time to just kind of share my work and, you know, find other people that had similar interests. I met my bass player on Twitter. <laughs> um, I was on Twitter and I was like, man, I, I need a bassist. And she just DM'd me and she's like, hey, um, I'm from Boston, but I'll play bass for you. And she flew out to Chicago and she forgot her bass, so we just had pizza in my room and we were just watching videos of John Mayer. <laughs> and that, that was it. And then, you know, I was like, you know what? All right, I guess you're playing bass for me now. My guitar player, Zeke, I met him on the internet. Uh, Ruby, I met him on the internet too. <laughs> Man, it's just weird. It was like a party on the internet. You know, everyone, everybody was, everybody loved my music and everybody was like really vibing with it. And then like back at home, nobody liked it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Los <laughs> vi, <laughs> That's our old bro. <laughs> That's funny. I used to come back here all the time, like in the alley. And I had like, I had like those Sharpies, like those fat ones. And I would just like tag in the back. This is funny. We lived down here, and like, we were loud. <laughs> so the my neighbors upstairs weren't really happy all the time. That's why I was a little scared to ask them, you know, but, but yeah. I used to be back here. Um, I used to dubstep dance, and I was into the shuffling thing, and like, I would do it right here. <laughs> <laughs> I would prop my phone up on the stairs and record myself dancing. I guess after it got broken into, they just, they're just redoing the whole building. Pretty neat. <laughs> I think growing up in church helped me a lot, you know, on the musical side, because I, I was able to experiment with a lot of instruments and, you know, like gospel music really helped me a lot um, in that time. I think the bad side is, you know, just being bound to like only making church music at the time and only having to explore that side of music and not being able to really venture out. The moment I, did, I decided to break free from like the church stuff, was just, I was just so bored with church music and you know having to sing on Fridays all the time, like for my youth group. Um, and I just decided one day, like, you know, I'm, I want to make my own music and I want to sing my own songs. And um, I, it was really just frustration and boredom that got me to it. And I think like leaving that just really helped me believe in myself and I grew more confident in my ideas and like what I wanted for myself. It was, it was freeing and it, it just felt very good. And you know, that, that's when I realized, you know, I can, I can do whatever I want, I can make whatever I want. And yeah, that's, that's when I really felt like an artist. I had two sides to my project because I kind of wanted to appeal to both audiences, old and new, but you know, I also just kind of wanted the shock factor in there. Um, so the first half, I have a lot of like love songs and you know, the whole ballady thing. 
Um, I guess just after being boxed into the whole bedroom pop thing after so long, kind of made me do that first half. Um, and then, you know, the second half, the songs are more mature, um, a little darker. Um, and I think just having both is it's really good. It makes the project cohesive. It pieces it together very well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm able to do a little bit of both, and I, I think that's important for a first project. I feel like the second half of the project is just very, like, it's very much like an I don't care attitude, you know, it's very like you're not going to believe in myself. Um, I'm going to trust myself and what I want and you know, it's kind of like no one could tell me anything. Um, so I, I think that helped a lot of people that, you know, may have been struggling with, you know, being confident with themselves because I struggled with that a lot growing up. Um, and so I just wanted to give people that, you know, like kind of like an anthem, you know, kind of just like, you know what, I'm cool and no one could tell me anything. cities was really scary because one day I'm in my room just making music in my pajamas at 2 in the morning and then the next day I'm in New York and everyone is singing my own words back to me so that that's just crazy <laughs> it still blows my mind um, and it's just crazy you know that people really took their time to learn my words <laughs> I used to get anxious when I performed, but I think now I, I, I feel like empowered actually. I, it's like this is my circus and I'm in control. <laughs> so it's cool. I'm the ringleader. Being back home after releasing the project and tour was a relief. I, it, just, it just felt really good to be back in my own bed and just being back in my, my little studio. Um, it, just felt, it just felt good to kind of pick everything up again and get back to it. Growing up, I didn't have a lot of other Mexican-American people to look up to, um, especially in the music field. Being that role model for people, being that representation is really cool. Um, a lot of people are able to connect and, you know, like they, they feel less alone and they, other Mexican-American kids like me are going to believe in themselves and say, you know what, you know, maybe I can do it too. And that'll drive them to, to make music, to make art, to make whatever they want. Um, you know, without feeling like where they come from or, you know, what they grew up with is going to limit them or stop them, you know. I just want to give kids like me a space to make anything, really. I just want to be able to give people the resources and um, the opportunity to make things without feeling limited or like, man, I don't have enough money. You know, because that, that's how I felt for a long time. And I don't think anyone should feel that way. You know, when it comes to your ideas, you should be able to put them out and, you know, make them come to life without feeling like, man, I don't have enough. Mm -hmm.